I get a lot of, you don't look like I thought you did when people see or meet me for the first time. And it's funny because I don't know if people are expecting someone good looking or maybe the South Park Warcraft guy, but it always makes me chuckle. I I have a face for podcasting. I get it. It's good for a laugh. You know what isn't good for a laugh? Shopping for razor blades. I hate it. I hate the whole experience. That's why I don't shop for razor blades. I just get them delivered by the lads over at Harry's. They saw what a gong show razor blade shopping had become, and they said, we can fix this. And they did. Harry's has better blades than the stores, cheaper than the stores, and you don't have to go to the stores. Visit harrys.com RTG for a $3 trial set. They're the best. And I'm not just saying that because they're partners of the show. I was using Harry's blades way before I started telling you about old video games, and I'll never stop. Why? Why would I? We all need to shave, and Harry's blades are the best on the market. They stay sharp, shave after shave. They come packaged in these awesome resealable little cases so you can take them anywhere you want, and they look classy. It isn't like the plastic extreme toy looking razor handles you get at the store. Boys, she's gonna use your bathroom at some point. Keep up appearances and get a grown up razor. And Harry's doesn't just look good. It doesn't just shave good. It smells good. Lotions, deodorants, body wash, everything you need to level up and look and smell your best. Harry's has the highest customer satisfaction rating in the shaving industry. And it's for a damned good reason. Top quality blades, cheaper than the crap at the store, and delivered right to your house when you need it. And they do that thing I love. They put their money where their mouth is. Don't like your shave? It's on them. But trust me. You're going to like your shave. Getting ripped off isn't funny. Switch to Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. That's harrys.com slash RTG for a $3 trial set. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Remember the Game. It is my retro gaming podcast. It is where every week a buddy of mine and I sit down and we geek out about the games we played back in the day. My name is Adam Blank. Thank you so much for listening to the show. And this week it is episode 293. And we are finally, finally talking Golden Sun for the Game Boy Advance. This little bastard won our RPG Patreon poll back in December. And it took me this long to get to it. Am I lazy? Yes, but that's not why. It's a classic turn-based JRPG, which admittedly isn't my favorite flavor of Doritos to begin with. And honestly, I think the first hour or two of Golden Sun is about as fun as watching paint dry. Like, I probably started this game five times and just put it down because of that fucking opening. But before you turn this episode off in disgust and say, send an angry letter to your local gaming podcast, I finally got through that first couple hours. And damn if a delightful little RPG wasn't waiting on the other side. I really, really like this game. It took over my life for about a week. I went all in on synergying every chance I had when I, I was in bed, downstairs, when Shaylee wasn't home, in the bathroom. I could not stop. It looks great. It sounds phenomenal. The gin, whatever the fuck they're called, system kept it fresh and fun. And, uh, and yeah, honestly, one of the best handheld RPGs I have ever played. I have a couple minor gripes with it. That beginning is slow as all fuck. Uh, the game talks too damn much. And <laughs> coming from me, I know a thing or two about that. And I got stuck at the end, which isn't so much a gripe as it is an admission of my crappiness at gaming. Uh, but I genuinely enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, excuse me. Uh, and I'll answer the question now. Yes, I will at some point check out the sequel of this game down the road. My pal Keegs is my guest this week. We had a friendly little chat about a friendly little JRPG in Golden Sun. I will warn you now, we are going to spoil stuff, so be prepared. You should be used to that by now when it comes to old RPGs. Uh, I have to say, man, in all seriousness, this game surprised me with its unsuckiness, and I'm ready to tell you all about it, and we're going to do that in just a minute, because speaking of surprising you with its unsuckiness, it's time for another edition of the Remember the Game infamous intro. Dun, 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 dun. 
If you're new to the podcast, welcome aboard. Consider this your warning. Our intros are kind of long, but they're a good time, and they're way more fun than the fucking desert portions of Golden Sun. I hate that fucking desert. Uh, but seriously, though, if you do want to skip them, go to about the 30-minute mark, and you should be pretty close to Golden Sun talk. I recommend giving it a listen. We talk video games and stuff. It's good times. Before I get into the normal rigmarole, listen, tickets for our comedy show in Toronto are on sale right now. Mark McHugh and I will be telling jokes at the Illuminate Theater on June 28th in Toronto. And as of Tuesday morning when I'm recording this, we have four tickets left. You can get them at rememberthegamepodcast.com if you want to come out. There's going to be a meet and greet afterwards. It's going to be a really good time. Thank you so much to everybody that practically sold this thing out in a fucking week. It was crazy. And a reminder, I'll be at the Calgary Comic Expo April 25th to 28th. I am leaving early on the Friday but I will be there for the whole week. And I'll be at GameCon Canada here in Edmonton, June 14th to 16th, if you want to come by and say hello, all right? Merchandise will be for sale and all those things, but you can also get it anytime you want at our website. There's all kinds of stuff, hoodies, t-shirts, coffee mugs, posters designed by my man Joe from 4545 Creative. Show him some love. You can find our merch at rememberthegamepodcast.com if you're interested. It's a great way to support us. And of close, you're like, dude, it's summer. I don't need clothes. I'm going naked. I understand that. You can always just throw us a couple of bucks on Patreon. It's about the best deal in the history of the internet. We offer four additional shows each week all ad free available to add to your phone on just about any podcast service you want monday mark McHugh and i look back at the simpsons on purple monkey dishwasher next week we're reviewing flaming Moe's, one of my favorite episodes of all time tuesday it's the rambling idiot where i just talk about comedy movies tv sports whatever i feel like my wrestlemania review is over there my thoughts on the upcoming last ronin teenage mutant easy for me to say teenage mutant ninja turtles movie is over there all kinds of good stuff friday it's game patch where i look at all the biggest news in modern video games and Thursday is Expansion Pass, which is a different show each week. We do look back at characters and consoles. We do rankings. There's modern game reviews. There's funny episodes. This past week was Expansion Pass 207. And with it being WrestleMania season, I dropped my annual WWE 2K game review. I thought WWE 2K22 was good. I thought 2K23 was better. And I was hoping that 2K24 continued that trend. Is it worth your hard-earned money? Have a listen and find out. And as is becoming tradition, here is a sneak peek of last week's episode of Expansion Pass, my WWE 2K24 review. Say I'm I'm going to body slam you and you reverse it. It's not like I'll start picking up for the body slam, you hit the reverse button, and all of a sudden you're just right back on your feet and you're hitting me in the head with an elbow instead. Like I will lift you up and then you'll find a way to squeeze out of it. Like they really, really have cleaned that kind of stuff up. It's just genuinely a very good looking video game. A lot of people that came by my Twitch streams of it and stuff have said like, man, that looks really good. I was uh, I was playing a Royal Rumble in the ECW arena. I'll get more to that in a second. And uh I had been eliminated, so the computer was just finishing it out. So I, you actually have an option to just hide the overlays on the screen, like all the health bars and everything. So there's not a thing on the screen. Is you're just watching the match. And I took a screenshot of the final like seven or eight wrestlers in my Royal Rumble, and I just posted it on social media, being like, "I love this game." And I had numerous people comment and be like, "I didn't realize that was the game. That looked real. Like it's a, it's a really, really good looking. If you're big into graphics, it's a really good looking game." So that's now available in our archives, and this week is Expansion Pass 208, and uh, we're doing something we should have done a long time ago. We are dedicating an episode of Expansion Pass to the NES. We've done a whole bunch of console-specific episodes in the past where we've looked back on them, retrospectives, whatever you want to call them, but we've never based one on the system that started it all for me anyways i adore the nes so this episode should be a good time we'll do that tomorrow again subscriptions on patreon started just three dollars a month to get new podcasts every week instant access to hundreds upon hundreds of archive bonus podcasts all ad free plus you can join our 2000 dish member patreon or uh well i guess it is patreon exclusive but remember the game discord you get a chance to vote in our patreon polls every month you get the ability to submit comments to be read on our shows you get dm with me you get discounts on your merch and you even get a shout out and get to hear me mispronounce your name like I'm about to do to most of these people. A huge thank you to all of our newest patrons. Shifty, a- I don't know if it's ADD10 or ADD10 in all caps. I'm going to go ADD10. Zardos, Big Guinea, Timothy Lenig, Rex Dart is Eskimo Spy. Makes sense. TJ Neal, David Garrison, Rudolfo Forte, Marcus Please, Please, Please. Caleb, hashtag go stars. Kicks knowledge. Kicks. Kicks and locks. Kicks and locks. Leo, Leo, Leo. James Devern. Mark Borregin. 
my own bobblehead, Stephen McGrath Bass, and Cryptid K. I think I butchered practically every one of those. But thank you all so much for the support. Welcome to Remember the Game Industries. You can find all that at patreon.com slash remember the game. Don't forget, we donate 5% of that to the Stollery Children's Hospital as part of my extra live stream every December. And if you sign up for an annual sub, you'll save your 12 months fees. Ching, ching. All right? Oh, yeah. And you can find me on Twitch. Admittedly, I've been on there in like a week and a half. I've been busy. But twitch.tv slash remember the game. Whenever I have time, I'm over there playing video games. Okay? That's enough blowing myself. Let's blow some of you by blowing in some cartridges. It is our opening segment here on the show. I read a few comments and questions from our patrons. Usually gaming related, but not always. And we call this segment Blowing in the Cartridge. He blows all right. He blows big time. That's it, honey. Get into the spirit. <laughs> Let's blow in our first two blowers this week are two of many that wrote in about Slay the Spire 2, which if you didn't see, it was announced last week or two weeks ago, I guess. We talked about it on Game Patch. It's not coming until sometime next year. I don't give a fuck. I'm excited as all hell. If you have not played Slay the Spire, you really need to. It is the unofficial official game of Remember the Game Industries, and I love it. So I'm going to rip through a couple of the quick comments on Slay the Spire 2. Bender's Shiny Metal Ass said, After the announcement of Slay the Spire 2 and seeing all the hype reactions, I decided to pull the trigger and get the first game as it was only 10 bucks. I'm disgusted at how this was recommended. Why on earth was this so hyped up? It is the worst $10 I've ever spent i have a wife and a kid and for ten dollars i might lose them how will i explain this to my family anyways back to playing slay the spire well done Bender's shiny metal ass has a good comment magpie pierce said i swear to jeebus i thought earlier this week that i wanted to ask you a question about slay the spire then the news hit like a day afterwards so what kind of new character or characters do you want to see in slay the spire too i thought of one the scholar an old man or woman that have studied the spire from afar and realizes it needs to be purged the theme of the cards would be knowledge of the creatures they're facing of secret techniques weapon weapons tactics and so on that is much 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 smarter than anything i could come up with for ideas for characters for slay the spire 2 but i want one i i mean like i loosely loosely based it on the idea of venom like a symbiote character i want one that can hurt themselves to do more damage like you can blatantly drain your own hp to throw like a hail mary attack at the enemy i think that'd be really cool and i'd like to see a paladin style character that could maybe heal instead of doing damage so you can choose which one you want to do on your turn i think those could both be interesting characters man i can't wait for i fucking can't wait for slay the spire 2 fuck i love silk song i love hollow knight i can't wait for silk song unfortunately silk song has officially been dethroned as my most anticipated indie game it's now a very close second to slay the spire 2 oh my god i can't wait uh justin combustion wrote and said did you hear the news the last ronin live action movie thoughts i did get into it in more detail on the rambling idiot uh on this this past week on monday on tuesday i guess one live on tuesday but uh really quickly if you didn't see it yeah the ninja turtles they've announced that they're making an r-rated last ronin movie based on the comics which if you've not read the comics you need to they're awesome you can get the whole collection of five of them for like 30 bucks at, at chapters or whatever your bookstores are uh basically it's set way in the future three of the turtles are dead and the fourth one is out to avenge them and it's fucking, it's so good. It's maybe my favorite turtle story of all time. I'm very excited about the movie. I'm nervous because I think it'd be very easy for them to fuck it up. But I'm hoping they go back to the 1990 movie uh, aesthetic. And I'm hoping that it becomes like the Deadpool of the Turtles universe. Where like you can have the PG, PG-13, MCU, or Ninja Turtles movies for everybody. And then you can have an R-rated one that gets a little bit more risque. So I'm, I'm fuck, I, I'm really hoping they stick it, man. Because I... I am intrigued. It sounds awesome. Fuck, I love the last Ronin. Uh, Diablo Spartan, pardon me, Diablo Spartan, said, Hey, Adam, long-time listener, third-time blower. When you were a kid, was there ever a game you saw in a magazine or commercial that you fell in love with immediately but never had a chance to play? For me, it was Twi Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom. I saw one preview in Nintendo Power, and I was hooked, but I never owned a copy, never saw it for sale, and didn't know anyone who owned it. Actually, so I remember seeing Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom in one of my game pros back in the day as well. And I used to rent it on occasion because I, I thought it looked so cool in the previews. And then I rented it and had no fucking idea what to do. No fucking idea. Um, two that stand out to me. One is actually Crash Bandicoot. I didn't get into Crash until probably into my 20s. But I remember seeing the commercials of the guy in the costume like, hey, plumber boy. And I thought they were the greatest commercials. And then I just, I don't know why I never bought Crash. I think it was like I was in high school and I was like, I'm too cool to play these games. So I never played Crash Bandicoot until later. And then the other one is actually, it's almost become a meme here at Remember the Game because there's a certain long-standing member of our community that wants an episode about it so badly. Uh, but Little Nemo, the Dream Master. I remember seeing 
previews for it in one of my old video game magazines. And I think I maybe rented it one time and never touched it again. Not that it's bad. I just never, every time I went to rent a game, I'd rent a Turtles game or a Mega Man game or something. Uh, so Little Nemo was the other one. I always thought it looked so cool. I loved reading the previews of it. And then I just never really played it. So that those are the two. Crash and Little Nemo are the two that I remember. And uh, Princess Tomato. That's funny. I remember. I remember that as well. Uh, if you haven't played it, that's a weird fucking game. It's on the NES. Look it up. Princess Tomato and the Salad Kingdom. It's a weird game. Sleepy New said, Greetings, Mr. Blank. I've heard you mention a few times on previous episodes that you like Japan. So I wanted to ask if you were going to get an opportunity to visit, what would be the top three things you'd like to do here? We moved to Japan last year from the States due to a temporary work assignment. We're having a blast. Love the show and keeping and keep doing you. Well, say, thank you, Sleepy New. I actually have been to Japan. That was when I fell in love with it. We went... Jesus, I'm old. I don't know, five or six years ago now, we went to Japan and Vietnam, and I absolutely fell in love with Japan. The coolest thing I did was ripping around Tokyo dressed as Bowser with Shaylee, and you could do these go-kart tours. I think I don't think you're allowed to do them in Nintendo costumes anymore, but it was genuinely the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. It was fucking sick. Uh, I'd love to go back. The number one thing I want to do if I go back is check out Super Nintendo World, of course. Oh, God. Uh, I've always wanted to see live sumo wrestling. And I really wanted to go to a New Japan Pro Wrestling show. They just weren't running when we were there. We did go to a ball game at the Tokyo Dome, which was fucking sick. And if you've never been there, the the three the the things I can most recommend are uh, actually the Tokyo Dome is fucking awesome. Go there. Uh, check out Super Potato. You gotta check out Super Potato. Retro games is fucking wild. This is the coolest thing. And uh, even if you can't dress up in costumes anymore, if that go-kart place is still open, ripping around Tokyo on go-karts is genuinely like one of the coolest moments of my life. I love Japan. I can't wait to go back. I fucking love that country. Uh, Luke from the city of Scotland. Oh, I'd love to see that city someday. Says, hey, Adam, third time blower. First time being read on the show. Well played. After listening to the last Remember the Game where you were speaking to Eddie from Flynn's Arcade, on behalf of all hot dogs, did you manage to acquire your beloved Miss Pac-Man cabinet? Loving the show. Keep up the good work. A lot of people have asked me that. If you haven't listened to the last episode of Remember the Game, I interviewed a dude from a arcade in Florida. Really nice guy. And I mentioned that my ultimate white whale for gaming is I want an authentic, big ass heavy miss pac-man arcade cabinet and he was like i have extra and i'd be willing to hook you up uh no i didn't i i'm grateful i i'm grateful that he asked but or offered uh i don't have the money and i certainly don't have the space for that fucking thing right now and to ship it from southern florida to no no northern alberta that's fucking feels like it's about three quarters of the way around the world i i we couldn't make it happen but someday someday thank you to everybody that's been asking i'm great i appreciate it uh, Rand Hakubi said, Andy, I've noticed that you will sometimes drop an I say nay nay. Did you pick that up from the late great comedian John Panette or did you come up with it on your own? Much love to our CEO. I'm glad she is doing better. She's doing great. She's sleeping on the floor right beside me. Fat diaper dog. Uh, great poll, by the way. I don't know a lot about stand up, but that is where I got nay nay. John Panette is probably my favorite comedian of all time. Top three, him, Jerry Seinfeld, and Bill Burr. If you've never seen him, look him up. I guarantee you have seen him. You just don't know who he is. He passed away some time ago. Shaylee and I got to meet him and see him live once. One of the best live comedy performances I've ever seen. And that was one of his things. When he would say no, he'd say, I, nay, nay. And I, I blatantly stole that from him. Rest in peace, Mr. Panette, you fucking legend. I love that man. And finally, before we move on, it's letter time. It's letter time. Aeroslonic. Wrote in and said, yo, Adam, what's your thoughts on pre-orders? I've only done it once for Battlefield 2042 and wasted $100 on a piece of crap game I only put 10 hours into before uninstalling it. Honestly, I will never pre-order another game again. Instead, I'll wait a few days and watch a review on YouTube of the game I want, then decide what to do. Have you ever pre-ordered a game and then regretted it? P.S. Ever go to the Cat Cafe on White Ave? Little crowded, but damn, there's some cuties in there. Cats and women. Uh, Arrow, thank you for the support. Thank you for writing in. To answer your second question first, I've never been to the Cat Cafe on White Ave here in Edmonton. But that's because I'm very allergic to cats, and I I like cats. I've I've had cats, but I'm very allergic. I don't think I'd have I'd be, I'd have a bad time in that place. To answer your first question, uh, for anyone that maybe is newer to the show, I have a I have a very very staunch no pre order rule. I can't think of a specific game that I've pre ordered and been burned by, but I just especially as someone that buys most of his games digitally, I just don't see the purpose. There is the occasional game that I will pre-buy, but when I pre-order, I'm not pre-ordering it like, you know, oh my god, they just announced Final Fantasy 17, I gotta pre-order it right now, fuck that. I'll pre-order it like on the Thursday when it comes out on the Friday so that I can play it the day it's already installed the day it comes out. And that's after I've seen reviews and I know, and it's only in like the rarest of exceptions, stuff like, I knew I was buying Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, I know I'm buying the new Mario games. 
stuff like when Mario Kart 9 comes out, that'll be one. Very, very rarely. But I, I, I just, I will dig my heels in and I will beg every single one of you listening, don't pre-order games. At least not from a mile out. If you want to order it a couple of days early, once the, the reviews are out, go ahead. But if you, and I, I guess some of you, especially you that buy physical, you're like, I got it. I'm not going to be able to get a copy. Do you, but like. You're getting no sympathy from us if you get a dud, all right? Don't just wait. There's always going to be copies. And if you buy digitally like me, there's literally no reason except to pre-install it. There's always going to be copies. So just wait, read some reviews, see what happens. There have been so many games coming out this year that I was excited about that after I saw the reviews, I was like, maybe at some point, but not right now. So just hold off. I am I am staunchly anti-pre-order. I was trying to think of something else I'm anti. I'm as against pre-ordering as I am you line. Those bastards. Anyway, thank you, Arrow. Thank you, everybody that wrote in this week. As always, I appreciate it. We'll get a few more comments in on the Rambling Idiot next week with our Left Blover segment. Uh, but let's switch things up and get to our Smash Hit segment, the official game show of Remember the Game Industries. Play one, remake one, erase one. And a huge thank you to Classic Concentration from the NES for unknowingly providing us with the theme music for the show. The rules are simple. Every week I give our patrons three retro video games. They can play one as it was released, remake one as a modern game. The third is erased from time forever. And as always, there are no wrong answers, but there is a right one. I'll tell you what it is in a second. This week we're talking Golden Sun, so I decided to go with three more GBA RPGs. GBA RPGs. So like a license plate. We have Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, and Final Fantasy V Advance. 38% of the vote said to play Superstar Saga, remake Final Fantasy V Advance, and erase Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. Let's see what a few of you had to say here, and then I will tell you what the right answer was. Zardos said play Superstar Saga. I was playing it not long ago, and the game is perfection. Remake Final Fantasy V in a Final Fantasy... <coughs> Excuse me, hang on. Choking up my own rage here. Dude, I was... <clears throat> I know a good podcast would edit this out. I might have to edit this out. I'll be right back. I don't know what the fuck's going on with my voice. Puberty. I'll be back. Oh, my God. I might have actually choked on my own rage there. I don't know what that... It was like... I, it felt like I just... My throat just closed all of a sudden. That was... Wow. Okay. Let's try that again. Zardos. Said so play Superstar Saga. I was playing it not long ago, and the game is perfection. Remake Final Fantasy V in a Final Fantasy VII remake style. Galoof deserves the Aerith treatment. I want to cry seeing it in 4K. And then erase Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. Even though I'm a huge Kingdom Hearts fan, I was never able to beat Riku in the castle, and I was soft-locked in the game, so fuck Riku and this game. They can go kick rocks with open-ended two-toe shoes. You know what? Any game that can soft lock you makes my shit lists. I don't even know that game. And, uh, I, you know, I'll save my thoughts because everyone knows where I stand on Kingdom Hearts. Good answer, Zardo. Sorry I butchered it so horribly. My God. The, you know I did it bad when I edited it out because I never edited out anything. I'm editing that, at least part of that out. That was pretty rough. Uh, Lee Carvello's Putting Challenge said, I'm playing Superstar Saga. I never played it, but Nintendo and Mario normally do great things. I'll remake Kingdom Hearts to get rid of that stupid card mechanic, and I'll get rid of Final Fantasy. Plenty of other Final Fantasies out there. I I have to say that is more people didn't say that, but that does seem like sound logic. Like, I could get rid of Final Fantasy. There are a lot of them. I think Final Fantasy V is fantastic. But I'll hear the argument that you're like, there's like 3 billion of these. We can, we can lose one. It's like Mega Man. You're like, we can lose one. Fair enough. Uh, Jake Carter said, I know that I'm the anomaly here, but as a resident King, uh, but as a resident Kingdom Hearts diehard, I have to play Chain of Memories for the nostalgia. Beautiful pixel art and soundtrack. I'll remake Final Fantasy V because it needs more love. Even just a modernized 2.5 or 3D version with the same story and gameplay. I'd be all over it. And I'll erase Superstar Saga. I'd rather play Super Mario RPG personally. You know what? I don't know if that's a hot take, but I agree. I like, I don't hate Super Mario, uh, Superstar Saga, but like, I would rather play Mario RPG or the first two Paper Mario games. I'm in the same boat. I, I feel you. Uh, Nick Finnegan said, I had one clear answer, and that was to remake Superstar Saga. One of my favorite games on the GBA, and a remake would do it no harm. The other two games I've never played is I have no interest in either. So I flipped a coin, and I'll play Kingdom Hearts and delete Final Fantasy V. I always respect people who base these big life-altering decisions on the flip of a coin. I, 
I love the gamble. And Straw Hat Luigi said, play Superstar Saga. The sprite work and music cannot be any better in my opinion. Remake Final Fantasy V because the gameplay is really fun with multiple jobs and gives many different ways to play through the game. Fix the story bit and it'd be perfect. And as sad as I am to say this, being a massive Kingdom Hearts fan, erase Chain of Memories. Even assuming this also erases the remake on PS2 because the card battle is not everyone's cup of tea and it also started the very confusing plot lines for the Kingdom Hearts series as a whole. Is that true? Is this the one where things kind of went off the rails? Story-wise, that's that's fascinating to me. Hmm. I agree. I love Final Fantasy V, by the way. I agree with just about everything you said. This was tough because I've played and loved Final Fantasy V, and I've played and liked Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, and I, I'm anti-Kingdom Hearts, as many of you know, and I don't like erasing games I haven't played, but Kingdom Hearts is the only one here I haven't played, so I didn't know what to do. I ended up going with the runner-up this week, 35% of you. Voted the same way I did, as did Sapolsky, who said, I haven't played any of these, but I'll play Final Fantasy V because it already has the Pixel remaster and I wouldn't want to remake it. I'll remake Superstar Saga because I'd really like to check this game out, and I would erase Kingdom Hearts because of these three, it's the one I have the least interest in. Sorry, Mickey and Goofy, but it had to happen to someone. Don't apologize to Mickey. Fuck him. Goofy, I'll hear apologies for. Mickey can go fuck himself. Uh, I'm in the same boat. I'm going to play Final Fantasy V Advance because it's fucking awesome. I love that job system, and I just want to play it again. I love that game. I'm going to remake Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga and give it the Final Fantasy VII remake treatment because that'd be dope. And then I'm going to erase Kingdom Hearts. I'm sorry, but no. I really did try to come up with a way not to erase Kingdom Hearts. I'm erasing Kingdom Hearts. I'm sorry. It's not happening. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's a Canadian in me. Uh, what have I been playing? Over the last seven days. You know what's crazy? I haven't done a new episode of this show in two weeks. And I've been playing the exact same games. I've been playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Which I'm really falling in love with now. I thought that game was really slow out of the gate. With the open world segments back to back. But now it's fucking... I'm, I'm as in love with it now as I was Remake. It's great. Uh, I've been playing WW2K24 because it's awesome. I've been playing Valetro, that stupid card game because I can't fucking stop. And I was playing Golden Sun Like a Fiend until a couple of days ago when I wrapped it up. I'll be starting Beautiful Joe this week to get ready for an upcoming episode of the show. But that's what I've been playing. So we're going to pause here. We're going to let the sponsor come in, do their thing. Or I guess I'll probably do the thing for them, but maybe they'll do it, whatever. And then when we get back, it's all Golden Sun talk, okay? We will be right back after this. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Look, we all need someone to lean on when we're not strong. They'll be our friend. They'll help us carry on. I can pretend that I want to do everything by myself and be left alone all I want. The fact is, we all need a few close relationships. Spouses, family, friends, someone to count on when the chips are down. Relationships are hella valuable, and they're not easy. Think about the people you're closest to. It's probably taken a lot of work to grow that little relationship seed into the beanstalk it is now. Therapy can be like a magic watering pot for said bean, and it can help you work through not only the good times, but the bad, too. I'll keep beating the therapy drum for as long as I can, because many Mental health is important, and a good therapist can be like a personal trainer for your brain. If you're considering talking to a therapist, look into BetterHelp. I've used them myself, and they were exactly as advertised. In this busy world, convenience is key, and BetterHelp makes talking to a therapist as convenient and accommodating as possible. Your therapist will meet with you when and how it works best for you. Sessions are done online, over video, voice, or just chat, and they offer you a ton of options schedule-wise so you can squeeze in a sesh when you have the time. And they have licensed therapists specializing in all kinds of areas so you can find someone to talk to that best suits your needs become your own soulmate whether you're looking for one or not visit betterhelp.com slash remember the game today to get 10 percent off your first month that's betterhelp h-e-l-p.com slash remember the game all right let's talk some golden sun i know that's why you're here as always i like to let our listeners sound off on the game we're covering before my guest and i hog the microphone we had a bunch of comments this week so let's rip through some of them james Devern said Golden Sun 1 and 2 were some of my favorite GBA games as a kid, but if you look past the nostalgia, they're really kind of mediocre. There's a lot to like, the music, the dungeons and battles, but the story is absolutely awful and the script is needlessly long and repetitive. It's fine if it's your first JRPG like mine, but it aged pretty hard. I, I don't know if I'd say it aged badly, but I do 100% agree the script is way too long and repetitive. That's probably my biggest knock in it, is just shut the fuck, shut the fuck up. And I understand that comes from a guy who was a half hour intro to his podcast, but God, God, 
I can't afford to choke on my own rage again. Bobby Litton said the best RPG on the Game Boy Advance, and that is saying something. I loved it. The story, the characters, the graphic style. Man, my nipples are getting hard just thinking about it. Thank God Nintendo finally added it and the sequel to the Switch Online. I agree on that part because I the fuck wasn't going to get a chance to play it otherwise. Personally, I think I like Final Fantasy V Advance more, but... It is definitely one of the best handheld RPGs I've ever played. No question about that. Banana Bread said, This was the game that defined that handheld games at that time finally looked the same as Super Nintendo games. I mean, I'd hear an argument that all the ports of the Super Nintendo games look like Super Nintendo games. But I, I get what you're saying. I agree. Dude, Game Boy Advance games are sexy as all shit. And I, this is one of them. I agree. I, I'm not going to argue with you. This game is a fucking good-looking video game. Uh, Terror of Rebirth. Said, I'd never heard of this game until a buddy of mine let me borrow his shortly after it came out. Other than Pokemon Ruby, this game spent more time in my Game Boy Advance than anything. I even have the save sound as my notification sound on my phone. Absolutely love this game. Started playing it when it came back out on Switch Online, just trying to remember where everything is and the little things to be done for the carryover data to the Lost or for the Lost Age. I didn't ride out till the end of the game that it carries over to the sequel. That's ballsy. We'll talk about that in a second. And Donkey Schlonga said, I'm really glad you're reviewing this because I'm tired of hearing you say you're trying to play it. But it feels so good to have this game off my backlog and it's not even that I don't like it but I just I tried to get into it for so long it feels so good to have finally gotten into it gotten through it it's done it's time to talk about it with my buddy Keegs I'm gonna queue up some Golden Sun music and when it stops we're looking back at Golden Sun which originally released on the GBA here in North America on November 12th 2001 enjoy the podcast everybody let's go So as I'm sure I probably have explained in the infamous intro and everything, we are talking Golden Sun this week. This is your final warning. There will be spoilers. Although, admittedly, I don't think there's anything that crazy in here to spoil. I didn't think this story was anything special. Uh, but j- j- speaking of not special, joining me via the blank phone this week to talk Golden Sun, that's a segue, <laughs> is uh, is my buddy Keegs, one of my go-to RPG guests. Keegs, you're special. You're just You're just special that's... in a different way. That's what my mom tells me. Yeah, you're a different kind of special. How are you, buddy? How's life? Uh, it's not too bad. Uh, finally out of winter, I think, for good up here. I think, I, knock on wood, but I yeah. think so. I think so. <laughs> we had, like, it, what, three false springs in the last Yeah, dude. Month? I know, but I, I'm like, Shay and I literally just a couple of days ago had a discussion about taking our winter tires off, and I was like, I'm going to give it one more week. Just, it is Alberta. Mm. You never fucking, you never fucking yeah. know. Yeah. Um, we're talking we're talking Golden Sun. I know you're an RPG guy. You were you were pretty gung ho about this. Where yeah. I have a lot to say about this game. Where are you? Are you where are you on, on Golden Sun? Uh I don't have a lot to say about this one because this is one that I played the first one back in the day, never played the second one, but then I played the DS one that apparently everybody hates. Oh. And I played the shit out of it and loved it. Way to go. That's how it's done. But uh, yeah, I, try, I tried to yeah i tried to jump back into this one too when it won uh and then we talked about it and it just i couldn't get it finished before persona 3 came out uh, and then persona 3 and Bellatro took over my life and i just have not had it to go back into golden sun well and to be fair uh i've never even played persona 3 but i've played personas before and to be fair to all the golden sun lovers out there golden sun is no persona like it's yeah. good, but there, it's no persona. I so it's fascinating because this game won our fucking Patreon poll back in December, and here we are, April. It's April fourteenth when you and I are recording this. So it took me three and a half months to get through this game. This game's only like twenty five hours long, but the reason it took me three and a half months was because I I must have fired this game up a dozen times, and I'm not the biggest RPG guy, and every time I fired this game up. I would I would play it about an hour or two hours and I'd be like I don't really feel like playing this right now. Uh, I did finally it, I finally forced myself to like sit down and really dive into it and then it, it clicked and I get it I, I like this game but mm. I gotta say buddy uh, for anyone listening to this that maybe this episode convinces you to go out and give Golden Sun a shot don't let the first hour to two hours ruin the game for you it gets a lot better the start to this game is as slow as any game I think I've ever played in my fucking life. Yeah, you can you can definitely feel the influence of like the old slow starting RPGs. 
of the 80s and 90s in this one. Right. It's definitely like a, hey, we're going to ease you into this because, like, they do the whole puzzle. Like, there's a lot of puzzles and stuff yeah. Uh, yeah. as well. So they kind of, like, ease you into this whole, like, hey, here, you're going to fight stuff with your swords and your magic. But then you're also going to use your magic for your puzzles. But then yeah. you're also going to get these little dudes that change your magic for your puzzles. And it's just, like, there's so many, like, layered mechanics that as you get into the game, like, you need to be using them all. So, like, they, I think they just were a little too handholdy for the first couple hours. I, I agree with that. And I also think, like, from a story, like, so, listen, there's very few things that I consider myself, like, genuinely good at. But talking, telling stories, like, I'm like, this is, I, I do this for a living. I'm not, I'm not terrible at this. And a bad storyteller can really get under my skin. And I have to be honest, Golden Sun is a bad storyteller because it takes what could take about 15 seconds to tell you and makes that take like eight minutes. Mm. Like this, boy, this is a long-winded fucking game. And that, I think, is what was turning me off at the beginning is there's not a lot of action. You have that whole little, uh, like, uh, oh, fuck, what's it? is it prologue? Is that the, yeah, prologue. It's like yeah. that whole little prologue where like, you really aren't doing any fighting. There's the storm. You need to try to save Felix. You're looking for someone that has some... How do you pronounce it? I pronounce it synergy. Uh, I always said psi energy. It, it does look like psi energy. I just... That seemed like so impractical. Yeah. Such an but, impractical word. But whatever. Like you're but it is a people. JRPG, so... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I literally just found out when the Final Fantasy remakes came out that it was Mako and not Mako. Yeah. So what the fuck do I know? So, but the very beginning of this game, like, you need to save that Felix kid. There's the storm. You're looking for someone with some cyanara energy. And yeah. you're really not fighting, like, at all. You have, like, one or two occasional fights. Then you've got, like, oh, okay, the storm is over an hour in the future, and they're learning to learn to use cyanara energy. And then you got to go find mm. the old guy and then hike up to the s s Mount Solus or whatever the fuck it's called. And I just, I was like, for the love of fuck, let's get going. And when it does get going, I was like, oh, okay, now this is actually pretty fun. Yeah, but I, like, I, fuck me, just get yeah, to the just point. One of those that they just spent too, a little too much trying to build the world at the start instead yeah. of uh, letting you do play the game while it's doing well, that. And like, like what, you get to fight like two battles against rats and then you fight uh, Satyros and Minardi and then they kill you. Yeah. Like, that's the only fights you get to do for the first couple hours. Yeah. And then just, it's just a walking simulator. And like, yeah. and like you mentioned the, um, how, how, the the Pokemon the the fucking Pokemons I don't know what the fuck yeah. how do you Jin. I'm not how do you pronounce what they are the Pokemons Jin. they're Jin? like genies yeah Jin oh, okay genies Jin. okay that Jin. makes sense all right yeah the Jins like the Jins play such a big role in the game and I'm shocked that you don't really interact with one for like I was shocked they didn't throw one at you in that little prologue just to kind of give you an like a teaser you know mm. like it was just I, I felt like it was two different games. I felt like that flashback was a whole different game from the rest of the game. So I, yeah, I've, I, we had comments from people being like, oh, I tried to get into this when you said you were going to cover it and it was just too slow for me. I get it. I, I really do think, and I, and I, I don't blame people that don't want to put the time into getting past that early part. Cause I, I hate that. I hate when people are like, oh, that's a great show. You just have to get through the first season and a half. And I'm like, well, then mm. I'm not watching your fucking show, but yeah. it really is a good game. If you can get through that first couple hours. I promise. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty solid from from an RP I will say like from an RPG perspective, like it's a I don't know if I've played another Game Boy Advance RPG. Oh no, I played Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. Yeah, and Pokemon. I guess and Pokemon, yeah. Have I played a GBA Pokemon? Oh yeah, Emerald. Yeah, Vance. Emerald, yeah. remember? Yeah, and I didn't like Emerald. <laughs> remember how well that so, went? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, and I didn't like Emerald very much. I I will say this. Okay, well then I can say with definitive with 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 some uh with some authority that this is now my favorite GBA uh rpg like i the gba like what makes the gba so cool to me is that it's like a handheld snes mm. and and i would sit here and and say that I, I would put golden sun i'm not gonna say it's better than your earthbounds and your chrono triggers and those but it's it's in that it's in the same class like it can it can hold its own against them yeah um, yeah, Camelot knew what they were doing. They 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 weren't just good at making Mario sports games. No, no question. Yeah, yeah. And I Which will is say wild. Again, like this is the Mario sports game developers went and made this like dope ass RPG. Yeah. 
and it's and it is a, a very solid RPG. And and obviously we're gonna get more into it. I already mentioned there are spoilers off the top, so you've been warned. Uh, I w- I want to say too, ballsy as fuck, ballsy as fuck to end this on basically like a cliffhanger slash part one. Yeah, like it. It was one thing when like Halo Two did it because at that point everybody Halo was everyone knew Halo, but this is like a brand new RPG. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, by the way, hope you like that because you're gonna have to buy another one to fucking see how it all ends. Yeah, they, uh, they've done that a, a few times in the early 2000s, though. There's there's a couple ser- um, PS2 games like the Dot Hack games were the same way. It was a series of four games and then a series of three where same thing. Here's the game. It is a full game, but that but like, the overarching story just ends and it's yeah, a yeah. hanger. Well, and like, and the thing about the ending to this one was, and we'll get more into the story uh, as we go here. But like, the thing about the, uh, the about the ending to this one that I found so shocking was that it wasn't like, well, hey, we've got a definitive conclusion on this story, but also, hey, this enemy, like, it's not one of those cliffhangers where like, oh, a bad guy got away and we know he's coming back. It was like, uh, all right, well, we basically just finished half the game. Let's go and do the rest now. I, I, mm. I was quite shocked by the ending. I, I will say that. Uh, especially i'll just tell everybody right now i didn't see the ending i had to look it up because i got to the final boss. i've played this game i've done nothing but play this game for a week for all of you that are like where the fuck is the rebirth review i've had i've been playing fucking golden sun and i got right to the final boss and you and i were talking about this off air maybe i just suck but like i felt like there was quite the difficulty spike at that very end yeah and i just wasn't leveled up enough and i just i ran out of time to go back and grind to beat it so youtube for the win but oh, yeah. for a game that's God, pretty God easy 90% of the time, it got tough at the end. Mm. Yeah, there's just a few bosses throughout the game, too, that just a boss comes out of the blue, is just way harder for no reason, and then you're just back into, okay, here, we're back into the normal game again. That was weird. Yeah, yeah, and it, because it is, like, so, like, if you never played it, it's a classic, you know, turn-based RPG, and you your, your party basically consists of four people. There is, like, a fifth person that joins your party for a little while, but basically mm. it's, like, four main characters, and you have them all fairly, like, for over half the game. It's not like one of those games where you get, like, like, Edge is my favorite character from Final Fantasy 2, 4, whatever you want to call it. But he only you only have him for, like, the last, like, 20% of the game. Yeah. Uh, in this one, you've got your whole party early. And yeah, I found, you get like... the last party member pretty, pretty early. Like, like, even my replay, when I stopped playing, I stopped playing pretty early, and I'd already gotten Mia. Yeah, Mia, yeah. And I'll sit here right now and say that, like, Mia, Mia's your MVP. Oh, she's a beast. She's such a beast because she can do so yeah. much damage. Yeah. But the healing, my God, the healing. And yeah. then I don't well, know if it... you have like you don't have a lot of healing up until at that point. No, no. And that's like, and that I found frustrating. Bit. And I think if if you move some gin around, uh, Ivan can do some uh, decent healing because he's got a pretty good magic stat. But yeah, well, and that's one of the things I was saying to you off air that like I found frustrating with the game too was like. Look, I understand it's a, it's you know it's a game, and I don't want it to be like Baby's first RPG or anything. I get that, but like the the healing, you're right. There's not a ton of healing in the game, at least not until Mia is on your team. But also, like even when she's on your team, dude, I don't know if I just built my squad wrong, but like bringing people back from the dead in this game is not. It's not like you just got en- endless like Phoenix Downs, mm. like those those water of life or whatever they're called basically yeah, they're what they are can expensive. expensive they're like dude what, they're, like, they're so coins? expensive they're like three thousand coins or something like that yes and like and you maybe find half a dozen like in the yeah. wild i know so the I was... first one that i found in the game uh this time i tried i started replaying it and when i played it back in the day i just took it to the store and immediately sold it because i was like I, one guy dies in the early game who gives a shit like that's right just, like how uh, how much money you're getting from selling that one thing like you can basically kit out your whole party right just by selling that one item yeah and and you're right because i found that too like in the early going i had at least somebody dying usually ivan because he's kind of a pussy yeah um but i'd have someone dying a lot in the early going and i was like all right well i'll go and revive them and, and come back but then for the later half of the game, I didn't have anybody die. And then every once in a while, I get to a boss fight where all of a sudden I'm getting just massacred. And I'm like, I don't have any revive spells. I had mm-hmm. one um, one of the gins that I had equipped to Isaac. Its its ability was a revive a person. But you use it once and then it's off the table for fucking forever. Yeah. Um. So it was a weird game because I found like, I found 
about two thirds of it, as far as combat goes, we'll get into the puzzles and stuff later. But like, as far as combat goes, I found about two thirds of it very, very easy. And then all of a sudden, it was like, uh, he's getting too comfortable. Let's knock him down a peg, and it would just fuck me yeah. right up. The the fucking there was a fucking dragon in that second desert, in this pink tornado <laughs> that you just pour water on. I yeah. tried to fight that dragon three times, and then was like, I give up. I can't beat you. I can't. Yeah, there, there's there's a bunch of those like mini bosses that are just like, what the fuck? Like yeah, yeah, those tornadoes. It's like yeah, you douse the tornado, which we'll we'll give you guys some context in a bit maybe. But yeah, you just you douse the tornado and then you fight this lizard that like can half wipe your party. Just destroy. And then it's you. like hey, go do that four more times in this desert. Fuck me, man. <laughs> and uh, there's a boss like. Oh, it's fuck. just it yeah. Was... Some of them are just like oh, <laughs> I guess the puzzle is combat this dungeon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So. Okay, so yeah, so if you never played it, you basically you play as these like you have four main characters. Um, Isaac is like the the protagonist, I guess, the the leader. Mm -hmm. uh, Garrett is like his best friend or his childhood friend. Ivan is this like Harry Potter nerd, this fucking wizard kid <laughs> who like literally dies when enemies fucking sneeze on him in the early going, but he's pretty powerful yeah. magic wise. Uh, and then Mia, who is just your MVP. Mia is the best. Yeah, and. Uh, the whole and I'll ask you this because like I saw some people comment and be like, "Dude, the story of this game is fantastic." I am in the camp of like I think the story of this game, I'd give it like a six. Like it was there's like these four stars that are like different like elements: Mercury, yep. Venus, whatever the fuck. And yep. these enemies show up and they get three of them, and you have the fourth one. And the enemies are going around the world trying to take these stars to various lighthouses that are equated to the stars to activate the lighthouses to bring back this like old alchemy magic thing or something or other. Yeah. It's a, it's a pretty basic, you know, four crystals. Yeah. Kind of it is final fantasy story. But like where the story lost me was it was like, okay, we are like, listen, I understand that every RPG in the history of RPGs, isn't just focused on stopping the main bad guy. You always have to go and help other people with their problems and, and that kind of stuff. But like the, the number of places and, and like, I, I, it was telling me about all these different places and all these different people and all this. And I was like, I have no idea who the fuck you're talking about. Like yeah, I thought, I, I thought the priority was getting to these lighthouses and getting our friend back and maybe stopping Felix. And instead now we're, going to a coliseum now i'm looking for like my 12th missing person i don't yeah. i didn't think the story was really <laughs> anything special frankly yeah it, it's i think it's more the story as a whole once you play the second game right uh, like i said i haven't i i've right. i've started it a couple times here and there over the years but never uh it, it's another one where it starts a little bit slow but once it picks up it picks up and then you just kind of cruise through the game from what i understand right but yeah it's just the the story as a whole of those two games is that's where it's like wow that's a really good story whereas the first one it's like yeah it was the the story felt like it was a lot more of just like a plot device to take you from place to place like, yeah it was it and was it's... like the game was focused on the puzzles and the dungeons and yeah. the story was there to just get you along the way whereas in the second one from what i hear is it's more like okay no now that's story first and the game takes you through the story. Like right. A normal and, game is. And I want to make it clear. Like I'm not ragging on it for the story because I think fun. Actually, you know what? I should take back that this is my favorite G GBA RPG. I actually think Final Fantasy V Advance is my favorite GBA RPG. I love Final Fantasy V Advance. That game's fucking awesome. And that game's story is practically non-existent. Yeah. It's just there. But like, I love the job system and the mixing and matching and stuff. And I'll, I'll put Golden Sun is, it's kind of like a hybrid from like a traditional, story heavy rpg and a little bit of final fantasy 5 because if you want to get funky which i did not but if you want to get funky with this game you can mix and match the various gins you attach to each character and make each character into different classes and give them different abilities and stuff mm -hmm. and uh i i did find that quite quite impressive especially for a handheld game you yeah. you do have uh, i i thought the, the the combat system was actually surprisingly deep 
Mm. Um, it's and it's 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 a cool balance too because it's like incredibly deep but it doesn't have to be if you just like don't get it or like don't want to get into mixing and matching all those gin around you can just slap the elemental gin on their matching party member and that'll just carry you through the game as long as you're like you're not running from everything as long as you're still doing battles and everything and like actually learning what your abilities do and stuff you can't just completely ignore the game but you don't have to go deep into those mixing and matching mechanics to get through the game. No, and that's and that's what I was gonna say. That's exactly what I did. I I because I looked up the manual, and uh, I'm gonna say it. I say it a lot on this show. Uh, if you're playing an old game for the first time, don't hesitate to look its manual up online because these old games were meant to be played with the manuals. Yeah, and... a lot of, like not so much in this era. It wasn't like you need it, but yeah, I remember like our back in the day with the NES and Super NES, like you oh, had yeah. to read the manual to well, to play the game. And even this one, like it does give you like some ideas of like, hey, if you so okay, so we we'll get more into the so the gin system in this game. There's like these little I don't even know what they are. They're they're they're, they're fucking Pokemon. They yeah, look like Pokemon. Yeah, they're basically like little elemental spirits. Yeah, and you find them as you play through the game. And whenever you find one, there's there's basically there's four elements. There's wind, water, earth, and fire. And each of the gins you find, each of these little creatures, falls into one of those four character, character categories. And each of the four party members in your team also are kind of default associated with one of those different categories. Hmm. And so as you collect these these gins, you can attach them to whichever party member you want and when you attach them to a party member, they'll level up that party member's stats, and they'll also give that party member access to new spells sometimes. But as you as you attach more and more of them to a character, they actually change the class that they're in. And so, like, if you just give like Garrett's the fire guy, if you give him all the fire uh, gins, then he just gets a whole bunch of fire spells. But if you decide to like, oh, I'm gonna give him a, a water gin and a in a earth gin then he might become like a whole different character and end up with all these different spells that he wouldn't have had otherwise. Mm. I, I tried to mix and match a bit and then just found myself like I was, I, 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 I could have used like a flow chart. I just got to the point where I was like, you know what? Yeah. I'm just going to leave them all on their own things. Yeah. Well, I, basically it, it, there is a formula behind it. I don't know if they go into it in the manual cause they don't in the game, but no, it's basically some of the better um, there's like, two element classes you can get and then three element classes and it basically does a whole balancing on like elemental strengths and weaknesses so it's like you you need to have like most of like your guy's main one and then have their like opposite element and then like a couple of one of the adjacent ones or something like that there's a whole thing that goes into it of just how it actually changes all the class like 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 we said it's a crazy crazy deep system and and something that doesn't need to be Totally. And I, but and I think cool that it is agreed. And I think part of the reason it's like that is cause like, you know, it's, it's easy now to look at this game in 2024 and, you know, point out how deep or how undeep it is or whatever the fuck. But like in, in when this game came out, 2001. Came out in 2001, like yeah. a, a handheld RPG with this much. Cause, cause you gotta remember too, like whether they want to admit it or not, they're kind of competing with Pokemon at this point. Yeah. And so a handheld RPG needs to have a little bit of meat on the bone, I can see how, like, if this was, and I know we have listeners that probably grew up playing this game, but this was your game as a kid. As soon as you're done, you hop in and do another run and just mix and match some more. Mm-hmm. There's borderline endless or combinations. There's a play. bunch of post game stuff, too. Like, there's this whole dungeon, the Crossbone Isles. I don't know if you ended up stumbling. I, I, I found it, there. but I couldn't figure out what to do with it. I did yeah, find so it. That's, that's the super dungeon. It's you need to have every psi energy. Like, you're got to be decked out in your gear. Like, it is as hard as. It's like if you didn't learn how to play this game, like you will not figure out how to get through. Right, this. <laughs> you're it's like the South Park. Like you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah, yeah. Like it's a lot of the like I said earlier too with like the different stacking with the puzzles too. It's like you're having to use two or three different psi energies on one puzzle to right. to figure out the puzzle kind of levels of depth with it. It's the right. game itself is just like a hey, here's a nice fun little RPG you can play. But if you're like a nut for it, they're like hey. Here you go. You want to get gritty with this game, you can give her. Yeah, yeah, you'll it's, get your money's it's, it's worth just, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't do it perfectly, but the fact that they were able to balance it in two vastly different ways like that is yeah. pretty incredible, I think. I, 
Yeah, I agree with that. And like, so we've talked about how like you have the four basic party members, and then you know they basically after that like it's just you, it's your standard RPG. You can attack, you can cast magic, you can use items, that kind of stuff. Where the another role that the gins play, and I it took me a little while to fully understand this system, but mm-hmm. once I I got my head around it, I was like, that's actually a really cool system. Is when you when you pick up one of these little Pokemon Jin characters, you can uh, set it to a character like to to a party member, and if you set uh to a party member that's when they level up like their their stat like you'll get some stat sometimes you get stat debuffs but you'll get stat buffs in return and yeah. you'll get access to new magic as you've got different class or different elements like equipped to your character and stuff like that but what's really cool is that you can also uh d d set i don't remember what it's called but un unset them uh where, standby standby that's standby, right yeah. yeah standby and then you can just use them as as a summon and mm-hmm. like if you have one water uh, Jin on, on standby, then you can cast a level one water summon. If you have two, then you can use a level two. If you have three, then you can use a level three. And then you're like the trade off is you're giving up the stat buffs and you're giving up some of the spells they give you, but you can use this really powerful summon. But then once you use the summon, now that uh, Jin goes on, it has to rest until it gets its strength back to be able to use one way or the other. So then it becomes a bit of a strategy thing when you, mm. especially when you know you're going into a big fight, it's like, do I, do I set? all of these gins on my character to make my character stronger or do I leave them all loose so as soon as I go into a fight I can cast a giant summon because mm-hmm. when they're set on you you can use a, a each one has its own specific like magic spell that you can use by un, by unsetting it you take it off yeah, your character it unleashes it yeah you unleash it its magic it's... spell yeah. once it's been unleashed then it counts toward being available toward the level of whatever summon you're casting so yeah. I, I I know it sounds complicated. It's about it's, it is it it's is a hard thing to explain. <laughs> yeah, well, because then there's another balance with it too. Is you can unleash your gin in battle, and you don't. It, it just sits there on its standby, like it's not resting, and then you can use it for a summon, or you can reset it back to your character right away instead. Right, and then so you, you can use that its unleash ability again right away. Instead right. of if you were to use it for the summon, you lose it for that turn for the summon, and then it's like two or three turns. I think it has to rest before it comes yeah. back. Yeah, like it's yeah. like and, yeah. And if you're using a summon, you don't get that gin back for a while. But if it's got a really good unleash ability, you can unleash it, set it back, unleash it again, and just keep spamming that ability over. And totally. Over. But like again, like if, if 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 it's coming across as overly complicated, it once you actually get into the game, it's not. It's much harder to explain than it is to play. Mm. Yep, we're um, also talking about it as a whole. It really does ease you into everything. Like it we does. said, it's yeah, just it it's a it's really fucking slow when it does it. Yeah, it, yeah. But that's agreed. because of I think it's because of the ceiling of the complexity is they just they went a little just, just a little slower on on teaching you. Like I I feel like in hindsight, they could have trusted players to pick up on it a little bit better, but Yeah, I agree with that. I agree. Doesn't make it bad. It's just no, no, not it's at just all. one of those no. you just gotta tough out the first couple slow hours. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Um and then another thing with the with the gins that I, I thought was really cool from a strategy perspective was like we've said, so you can set it to a character, and then if it's set on a character, it'll level up the character stats and it might give you access to some new magic and stuff like that. And it's really cool, like if you have again, I'm just gonna use Garrett because I actually didn't really use Garrett's magic much. He was kind of my tank. I just use him for physical yeah. attacks most of the time. But like that's he, what he's best at. Yeah. So like he has all these fire gins attached to him. So he's got a bunch of fire spells if I want to use them. But then if I remove one fire gin and add one water gin, I actually lose access to like three or four different water sp- or fire spells, but I gain access to a couple they might not even be water spell like they'll just be random mm. spells it's it's such an odd mix and match thing yeah um what i found very tricky but also cool is like using a summon like in i, I was reading some like some discussion threads from people like just talking strategy in the game and one guy was saying like he he casts his summons as soon as he goes in and yeah, they're like no the summons are really well. like your hail marys in this game mm. because like with 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 maya mia maya mia maya with her, she's your like the awesomest healer, and especially later on in the game, she gets wish and wish well, mm. which are like healing spells for your whole party, and they're pretty powerful. Oh, so good, but <laughs> oh, they're they're godsends. Yeah. But if you if Love you me use a good group healing spell, any RPG, I don't care what it is, you get that first group healing spell, you're like, mm, oh, so good, it's so precious. <laughs> but then if you use a couple, if you unset uh, a couple, if you put a couple of her her gins on standby. 
then she loses access to those spells. Mm. And I'm like, fuck, now she can only heal one person instead of healing the whole squad. And it's like, was that worth taking those gins? Like, and that's just one example of like, it really does become a like, I guess a couple of boss fights, I would roll the dice to be like, fuck, I need to drop a couple of heavy summons because the summons do massive damage. Yeah. But and then, then they, they also boost your uh, elemental uh, damage. That's right. Yeah. Like if you cast a fire summon using a character, their fire uh, powers go up as a whole. Yeah. So that that's why I do the, I have them all ready and then I just summon for my first turn and then go into the battle. Just, just to, to get, get the, that, yeah, the that elemental boost. power yeah. up right at the start. So it, I, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. The was was like all the strategy that went into it with that kind of stuff. The one, the one criticism I think I have of the combat was that nine tenths of the game was so like autopilot easy, and then the other ten percent all of a sudden was just like go fuck yourself. Mm. And I just, you know what I'm like. I didn't. I felt like the balancing was a little off. Yeah, personally. and I think that's that just can't comes with the territory of how both like you know shallow and deep the the combat is yeah is you know it, they don't want they can't make normal story stuff too difficult for the people that really dove into the combat system because then the people that didn't are fucking stuck and yeah it's got to be a very delicate like i i think developing a jrpg as a whole must be a very tricky thing to when it comes to balancing and stuff and then when you add in the ability to mix and match as much as you can in this game like yeah it's it's that's not an easy thing to do so i'm not gonna like dock at major points but i did just find that like i didn't even use need to use most of my magic and stuff 80 percent of the time like i did sometimes so i didn't have to but then yeah. i get into a boss fight and i was like fuck me like i guess i i need every like i now i need every trick i have even though i haven't been using like it doesn't force you to use the tricks until you get into a situation where like it's like, well, if you don't know how to use them, it's over. Yeah. You know, so it's like, shit, it's been a while since a boss. I forgot how to play. Yeah, this game yeah, well. exactly. Just yeah. Mashing a that, that's exactly it. Yeah. So and then, like we said, uh, I found it just a little bit frustrating that like when you die, like when a character gets KO'd, uh, unless you've got uh, like if there's a spell, like if there's a revive spell, like just a magic spell that you can get from a certain combination of characters uh, of gins, I never found it. I had, there is, I had I can't remember off the dome either. Yeah. There might like, be one gin its ability was to revive a character and yeah. then I had a few water of lives. But I don't I never got my hands on a revive spell. But I will also say when I finished the game, I think I had 4 to 5 gins per element and looking it up it looks like there's 7 or 8. Like there you can very yeah. easily miss a bunch of them. Yeah, there there there's a whole bunch of hidden ones all over yeah. the place. Like there's a lot of uh story beats as you'll go through where it'll get it it'll give you like a shortcut back to an earlier part of the of the world map, but it won't really like tell you or encourage you to go back there but if you do there's usually like uh, a bonus dungeon you can do to get some extra equipment find another gin like there's just side shit out the ass yeah and there's there's many of them and and we're gonna take a break in a second and then we get back like so we've talked a lot about the combat and stuff i want to get into the puzzle aspect of the game and then the graphics and things but like playing through it there there was multiple occasions where i saw a gin standing on the overworld like or on the map like clear as day but it was like, how the fuck do I get to you? And some of them I figured mm. it out, and some of them I never did. Some of them just stood there on a ledge above me forever looking at me. And I was like, I did never, I, I am never going to figure out how I'm supposed to get up to you. <laughs> uh, you can stay there forever. If you want to just jump down, you can come with me. But they were like, no, fuck you. We're not moving. So anyway, well, here's what we'll do. We'll, we'll, t- we'll take a break here. I'll let a sponsor come in and pedal their wares so I can keep the bills on, as we say. And then uh, I really want to get into the puzzle aspect because that's a whole part of the game we haven't really touched on yet. So Mm. we'll be right back and we'll do the puzzle thing and stuff. You youngins may not know this, but there was a time when all our work was done on paper with pens and pencils and your binder was your hard drive. That was back when my hair was all one color. Anyway, computers have made working creativity so much easier with one exception. Losing your data. We've all lost a report, a video, a project we've been working on, and it's devastating. Your binder never crashed. Fortunately for all of us, CrashPlan exists. They're like a binder for your data. That's 
It's a stupid comparison, but they really are. They back up and protect your data, so if something goes wrong, you can open that binder and get your work back. Visit CrashPlan.com slash RTG for 50% off your first year of CrashPlan. They're exactly what their name says, a plan for when your computer crashes. Sign up for whichever one of their plans works best for you, and CrashPlan will silently back up all the files on your computer. And it's not a one-time thing, it's every 15 minutes. Every file that changes on your computer is backed up on their servers and you have unlimited access to all of it including older backups so it's not just a fail safe if something goes wrong it's like the ultimate undo button as well they have plans to fit all makes and models of clients you can get a plan for your home computer or take care of all your staff with a plan for multiple people each person will have their own individual backups and your admins can access any and everything whenever they need it you're investing time money and resources into your work don't spend even more of them redoing your work if something goes wrong. CrashPlan has your back and keeps you moving. Go to CrashPlan.com slash RTG for 50% off your first year of CrashPlan. That's CrashPlan.com slash RTG for 50% off your first year. Back up better with CrashPlan. Okay, so we've gotten into all the combat and all those, which, you know, I think is really the the bread and butter of a, of a JRPG other than maybe the story is the combat. But this game's got a, a really, really neat puzzle system. And again, it comes back to uh, your magic. And a lot of your magic spells interact with the overworld and you have to mix and match some of your spells to solve some of these puzzles. And I, I thought it was brilliant and really cool about 80% of the time. And then occasionally I'd run into a situation where I, I was trying to, I knew what I had to do. I had to use like a lift spell to move a, a rock and mm. I could not for the fucking life of me figure out where to make my character stand to make this spell lift that fucking rock. And yeah, it would make me so fucking angry. Yeah, fucking there, there, me there's, angry. there's a few of those where uh, just, yeah, some of the, and, and that's just because of just how the graphics are with the pixels and everything. And yeah. like, it's just, yeah. it's hard to kind of get that, that lining up. But yeah, some of the hit boxes, for uh, some of the spells for puzzles and stuff are a little uh, a little small or like some of them might not be like normal. Like a lot of the spells will be like just a cut, like a square or two squares in front of you. And that's the effect of the spell. Yeah. And then you'll do a puzzle and you have to do that spell that that's where it normally was, but you have to do it different. Yeah. Like we're talking about the desert with the whirlwinds. Normally you would douse something two tiles in front of you. That one, you have to wait till the, whirlwind grabs you and yes. then try and use the water on it otherwise it just kicks you out of the whole ass dungeon yeah i finally like, had what? to google that <laughs> but it doesn't tell like, you that at all no like it's, I, it's, and like you said like so one of the abilities you have to use in the overworld is douse which is basically you, you call a rain cloud and it comes and soaks stuff and any other instance like you said you stand a little bit away you use it and it clashes in front of you but when you go into this desert you get stuck in these tornado like these sandstorm tornadoes and they do tell you to use douse to break the tornado. They do tell you that. But what yeah. they don't tell you is that instead of standing right in front of the tornado and using it, you have to let the tornado suck you up, then open up your magic menu, and then select douse, and then spread. Like, I, I, I had to Google it because I just. Yeah, and you only got like me. a couple seconds to react before it uh, pitches yes. you out of the Fuck. place. Let too. me just say as a whole, fuck the deserts in this game. Fuck all the yeah. deserts in this game. Yeah, um, it's. It, that them. that I, I don't like a lot of deserts in RPGs. I find I feel I, like desert areas might be the water levels. Yeah, I don't like RPGs. them in any video game. Yeah, they're just ugly. They're yeah. they're boring to look but at. Just, I hate especially them. in RPGs, deserts are just they. There's usually not every one of them, but just a lot of RPGs tend to have obnoxious desert tornado puzzles. And then to make you go through, in this case, you have to go through two fucking deserts. Ugh. I was like, God damn it. Fuck, fuck you. Um, but getting back to the puzzles on the overworld, like it's, I, I, I think some of them, like, I think the coolest one is when Ivan first joins your group, he has mm -hmm. the ability to read minds. Yeah. And you, you, the, the, the ability is useless, I think, when you're in a fight. I don't even think you can use it when you're yeah. fighting. Yeah. I don't but, think it's, it is at all either. Yeah. Yeah. But it works in the overworld and you can go up to basically any non playable character and use this mind read spell. And and then you read their thoughts. And some of them, it's it doesn't do anything. Like, it's just like, you know, I'm hungry today or whatever. But sometimes, yeah. like, you find secrets or it tells you how to keep the game going and stuff. And I the first time I had to use that to, like, starting advance, to start advancing the game, I was like, that is a really clever 
yeah like, that like mind and just how, how they how they do it too you like the there's the thieves in the town and so you have to try and like because they're like oh we're not the thieves and you're like okay right. well let's try and read their mind and they they know you're doing something because like the the world like it doesn't actually glow like that when psi energy is being used like i think if you're not an adept you don't see it at all right i believe they say in the game is it's completely invisible so all these thieves see is this weird little harry potter kid coming out to them and like looking at their face yeah and then and they're like what the fuck's up with this weirdo and you have to chase them around the in room (laughs) yeah don't they say that like we we, they feel something i think yeah and like yeah so i thought that was really cool they feel something magical happening but because they're not adepts they don't know what's happening yeah so like and and you get a ton of abilities like that that work in the overworld. You can you can read minds. You get the first ability you get in the game is the ability to move stuff. And this giant phantom hand shows up and can move heavy things, which I found to be one of the most like it's a great thing, but that was one of the ones that farted me around the most was using my mm. move. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it doesn't hit where you want it to. Oh fuck. Like you pick up the ability to you see all these puddles as you're playing through the game, and I'm like I know there's got to be something I can do with these puddles and I don't know what it is. But then later you pick up the frost ability and then you realize like, oh, anytime I see a puddle, I can cast frost on it and it'll form a giant column of ice. And sometimes yeah. I can use that column of ice as a platform to make it jump. Sometimes I can use it to lift a door up so I can get under the door. Uh, you use whirlwind yeah. to rip away like bushes and trees and like leaves and shit so you can open up like cave entrances. Um, yeah. One of the like other a cool really ones- cool thing... Uh, I want a really cool thing back on the the ice one first before we go past is no no when it fir- when you first see it happen in the overworld you see an enemy do it and then run up and use it as a platform to jump across right like, it's just really cool how it teaches you mechanics in the game it's never like it's almost never like well here's the game hope you figure hope you can just figure this out it shows yeah. you like hey here's how this ability interacts with the world. Like, here's an idea of, like, hey, here's exactly what it can do. But yeah. then it's, like, now figure out how doing that gets you through that puzzle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it just I, it I, just ensures that, for the most part, you're going to know ha- what mechanic you need to try and do to, to solve a puzzle that you're coming right. up to. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that, yeah. And, like, and there's some other cool ones. Like, I think Ivan, Ivan's got most of the coolest ones. Ivan's mm. got the one where he's got the cloak one where you can you go invisible in shadows. I like that whole dungeon where you need to sneak in the shadows past the thieves yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and then he's got one... stel- they made a stealth section in an RPG and like not awful. No, it was awesome. It was more I fuck. I, I know I'm gonna get hate letters for this, but like <laughs> I enjoyed that more than playing Metal Gear Solid. That was more fun to me. Like I like I enjoyed yeah. that. I it's one of my favorite stealth sections in anything, and I actually like stealth games. Yeah, it was dope. It's just a solid stealth section. Yeah, agreed. Um, I like that. And then another one that Ivan's got that's really cool is the uh, fuck. I don't know what it's called now. Uh, it's the one where you can see hidden things. Oh, uh, reveal, reveal, and yeah. like so you like. And, and I found myself many a time because most of the puzzles aren't too deep, but then every once in a while you run into one that like I was like I had to look a few things up because I was like I have no idea what the fuck to do here, and mm-hmm. I started to realize after a while that like reveal was your best friend many a time yeah. i was stuck and then i'd use reveal and there's like oh there's a switch on this wall that i just couldn't see without using reveal and then that's how i yeah. move on and so. reveal can be used to like circumvent some other stuff like there's some like darkness puzzles and stuff where you're just like wandering around in the dark and if you use reveal it'll just turn that little section around you into you can see what you're doing yeah i uh i quite enjoyed the i liked yeah that's right too yeah i i I quite enjoyed that reveal ability i i thought that was cool i thought one of the coolest chapters in the game was the one where isaac has to go through the coliseum or whatever it's called and you can have your three party members each stop like so basically if you've never played it you go through these three it's like you're like basically in the quarterfinals of a tournament so there's eight gladiators in this tournament and you need Mm. to beat three of them to win and it it starts out with like a, a race to an obstacle course and then uh, whoever wins the race gets the first choice of what weapon they're going to use in their battle or what yeah, armor they they, use. Yeah, because they take all your equipment away from you. Yeah, and, right? and that alone I thought was really neat just because it was different. But then mm. I loved the strategy aspect of when you pick which party member you want to cheer you on at which station of the obstacle course, if you pick the right party members, they can use their various abilities to cheat and help you cheat and get through the quest as quick yeah. as possible. Yeah, I thought that, that was, that was, I really thought that was cool. the coolest part like, of the game, just... frankly. 
Yeah, the the way like even when the puzzles don't fully land, like like I said with the dowsing of the fucking whirlwinds, yeah, the way that they make these puzzles, just the way that everything interacts together yeah. in the world with like the magic and the puzzles and everything, it's just it's just fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, it is, dude. I and then it's so cool that like some some uh spells, uh synergies, whatever the fuck, some spells work both in the overworld and in combat some work just in combat some work just in the overworld mm -hmm. and, and then the, really... another thing is uh because a bunch of them you need a, a specific ones for puzzles but if you're mixing and matching things stuff you might not have that psi energy so they just give you items that are just like hey somebody holds this item they just have this specific psi energy that you're going to need for a lot of puzzles throughout the game and you know what i meant to say that i don't know if i missed it or if it was optional but like I never got growth to make uh, plants grow. I never gro got growth it. is one that you only get from moving uh, gin around. I think I th there might be an item too for it. Yeah, actually. like I assumed there was because, like you said, for most of the other ones, there was an item you could get and equip it to someone to give them that ability. But I like growth. I as I kept finding these little plants and I could not figure out what to do, so I finally looked it up because I assumed it was douse, like water them, and that yeah. didn't work. So then I finally looked it up and it was like, oh, there's ability called growth, and I. I literally got to the final boss of the game and never had growth on any character. Yeah, because so uh, yeah, uh, Isaac can get it and Mia can get it. Because back to the Colosseum, um, there's one of the the spots where you'll want to throw Mia in it, and she'll. It's where they're trying to drop the bridge. Yeah, and she and, can use uh, the growth spell. Yeah, yeah, and then use the growth and just circumvent the whole bridge yeah. thing. I actually think that was where I looked it up because I was like, how can I not like, how the fuck do I water this fucking plant? Mm. And then it turned out you don't water it. You idiot. That's not how plants grow. You don't water them. <laughs> you fucking, you grow them. Yeah. So, um, but I really liked that aspect of it. I thought that was cool. Uh, I, I will say too. And like, I, literally, I don't know if you'll ever find an episode of remember the game where I dunk on the graphics on the game boy advance. Cause I all, I think they all look great, but boy, fuck. I love the way this game looks. Yeah, it looks really good. It looks, it looks. If you've never played it, it actually it reminded me very much of the uh, Minish Cap. Oh the, yeah, the art style of it reminded me of Minish Cap, which is also a gorgeous yeah. game. Yeah, so. I find the the battles, the the like the three D art in the battles gives me like Donkey Kong Country vibes. Yeah, yeah, like, just yeah. With the I, amount of detail and stuff on those the three D models and everything, and yeah. And, and then the way, like, that, the, way like, the camera moves around and shit, just like what the fuck? Like they didn't need to make it look this good. <laughs> no, agreed. Yeah, I, 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 frankly, like you know, I, I always use that stupid analogy of like when you're developing a game, you've got the the pie, and you decide how much of the development time you want to spend on this or that. But it doesn't feel like like the game really looks spectacular. But I don't feel like anything got shortchanged mm -hmm. in exchange for the graphics. I didn't always have the sound on, but when I had the sound on, I thought the music was very oh. good. Music's uh, incredible. Uh, it's one of my favorite um, uh, producers in the industry did the music. Uh, Motoi Sakuraba. He did the music for um, like all the, the sports games as well. He's done Dark Souls, uh, Star Ocean, and the Tales of series. That's a pretty good resume, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought it was like the music didn't, you know, and like it obviously is, you know, it's GBA music, but that's not to take anything away. Yeah. The GBA is such a little powerhouse. Yeah, for how shitty the, for how, because it is notoriously had a very, very shitty sound chip in the GPA. Like yeah, there's yeah. a lot of hacks out there for GBA games that are just fixing the sound. They're like, oh, hey, yeah. remember that game you love? Here's a patch that makes the sound better. Right. Like that, there's so much of that out there. And like they still manage to have this game sound good. Yeah, yeah, I thought it sounded great. I like I said, there were various like with most RPGs. I I quite often at at times I'll I'll turn the sound down and I'll either lurk on a Twitch stream or I'll just watch YouTube videos or put a, you know a, a you know a baseball game on or something. Mm. But many times I just found myself turning the music on because I was like, man, this game just sounds sounds fucking really good. Uh, yeah. Oh, you know what? Okay, so one thing I wanted to complain about, I should have done this earlier. Uh, it's not, it's, it's the one knock I have on Earthbound is its inventory system. This game's not quite as frustrating as Earthbound, it's, but it's up there. It's fucking up there, though. It's Especially up. this one. It gets better in both the other two games because you do, spoiler alert, get more party members. Right. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really bad in this one because you like, only have the four. Yeah, if you've never played it in this one. Frustrating. 
you have four four party members, and each party member has fifteen inventory slots. And fortunately, you can carry. And this is where this is why it's better than Earthbound, because like in Earthbound, if you want to carry three hamburgers, that's three inventory slots. At least in this one, if I want to carry like three herbs to heal, it's one yeah. slot with three there. Yeah, it's, it's Dragon Quest style, not Earthbound yeah. Style. But like the I and I get the strategy aspect of it. But fuck me, dude. Like the combination of the fact that like one party member can't access other party members' inventories during combat, yeah. combined with the sheer lack of of uh like water of life, phoenix down, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Like I didn't know who to leave. I was like, I go into like a big boss fight, and I'd be like, okay, I've got seven water of life. Everybody needs at least one. But I'm like, who the fuck do I leave them on? Because the problem is, if the guy I leave all my water of life's on dies. Yeah, now all my I mean, Phoenix Downs are gone. Or what, I'm yeah. just using the word Phoenix Down because that's what everybody knows. Yeah, it's and now same I can't revive the, anybody. Yeah, the one gin that can revive somebody, any of the gins. One of your guys dies, you don't get access to any of those abilities until you can yeah. revive them. That's so always like, driven if you me were crazy. relying, yeah, if you were relying on summons for that battle, and like they were a big, especially if you're mixing and matching, right? yeah, like if. Like, it's one thing if, oh, like, you know, oh, they killed Ivan again. I guess I don't have wind magic for this one. But, like, right. if you're mixing up and you got a whole bunch of different magic on Ivan, like, you know, there goes your fucking spellcaster. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's what that's what kept fucking me against the final boss was I was like, so Isaac has the djinn whose ability is to revive one downed teammate. And then each person had a couple of water of life's. But the problem was like that final boss, like they're, they're slowly, they're killing me over and over again. And eventually they're killing off the people that are the only ones that still have revive abilities left. So now mm. once they're done, I'm like, fuck, like I like Isaac's corpse is laying right there. And I don't understand <laughs> why I can't just go into his pocket and take out this fucking inventory item that would bring him back to life. But we can't do that. And so I guess just, I'm just going to lose because I have no way to revive anybody now. I just want to say you can do that in D and D. You can do that in everything. It's just yeah. Earthbound did it too. I'm not. I'm not opposed to shitting on Earthbound. Earthbound did it too. It's like fuck, dude. Don't lock inventories to individual. I get what they're trying to do, but yeah. like if it was, and I know we're like if it was real life, people wouldn't be able to summon fucking wind. You know, tornadoes. Yeah. I get it, but like but if I'm in a fight, if I'm in a fight and and with Keegs and Keegs dies and Keegs has an item in his inventory that I can bring him back to life and I need him back to life to win this fight. I'm going to go into his pocket and get that fucking item. Like, it's just, yeah, that like, made me crazy. Fuck. Yeah, if revival items were a little bit more plentiful, it yes. probably wouldn't be as bad. Like, if you could just consistently have, like, two on every party member. Right. But, yeah, like, you, you can have two on every party member as long as you've never used one for the entirety of the game. Yeah, yeah, no shit. Or just <laughs> then, fucking... Like I said, just give me a shared inventory. Like it fucking drives mm. me crazy. Shared inventory. Um, also, dude, yeah, I want even to say a blend. Like uh, I know later Dragon Quest games started just doing a blended inventory. It's like you have your invent inv individual inventories for each of your characters, and then you just also have an extra inventory. Sure, I would take that too. Just something because it was like it just felt like no matter which way I guessed on who would be the one to die, I always guessed wrong, and I was fucked. Mm -hmm. Um, also like. I, I don't know about you, and, like, I, I didn't, like, when I play a JRPG, I rarely grind, but I also very rarely run away from combat, only yeah. if I'm almost certain I'm going to die, because I want the experience points. Like, I, I, I never, you know, and, and I rarely find myself horribly underleveled or overleveled, but um, yeah. one thing I found in this game was, like, money is, unless you want to go grind well, money is at a premium in this fucking game yeah that, that's why i told you i sell those revival items yeah like, like i'd rather like the money that they give you it's like you never get enough for it to be a useful as an item anyways yeah it's might as well just fucking sell them and i just save more often yeah and like because you never get ahead like you can yeah. i'll go into a town and i'll bring up my inventory and i i see i have like Forty thousand gold, and I'm like, oh, that should be lots. And then I go to the fucking weapon and uh, and, and armor salespeople, and it turns out like the newest weapon or the newest piece of armor I need is like fifteen thousand. So I like, I can yeah. never. I there were very rarely did I go into a town where I could afford to put all the best equipment on everybody. Yeah. Like, so I had to pick yeah, and choose. Usually you gotta I focus weapons first, and then it's like every town I'll usually or like I'll alternate. It's like okay, I go to this town, everybody gets new weapons. Next town, everybody gets new armor. Town right. after that, weapons again. Like, I, I would, just, yeah, I would. You never have enough money. No, 
I, I found what I would normally do is I would look at like, okay, so if I spend 6,000 on this sword, Isaac's attack will go up by 20. If I spend 5,000 on this axe, his attack will go up by 15, but that leaves me another thousand to spend on something. Like it was, yeah. and I'm fine with that, but it was just, I was like, I was shocked that, you know, most RPGs by the end of the game, you have so much money that you're like, I'll buy whatever the fuck you're like, you know, you're walking in there just yeah. like, you know, shooting Give like waves everything. of gill over people. Yeah. Uh, I never found myself financially ahead in this game ever. Yeah. So, well, and, and then, then the other thing is too, cause, uh, the weapons, weapons can have their own unleash abilities, uh, yes. which is different than a Jin's unleash. Uh, it was calls, uses the same term, but totally different. It's just an extra ability that it does on a critical hit. Yeah. It was like getting a critical hit and some yeah. of them, dude, by the end of the game, I don't remember what it was called, but I got some, I think, I don't know where I got it, but I, Isaac had like a sword that had a death ability. Was it the Kikumanji? Uh, I, I, I might a I, Japanese I don't name. Uh, Japanese looking. Yeah, it looked like Sephiroth's sword, kind of. Oh, yeah, you might have gotten but the best weapon in the game then. That thing, yeah, I think I got in the Lucky Fountain. Kikuichi Monji. But that thing, like, the number of enemies that thing killed in one hit, I was like, oh, yeah, buddy, that's fucking hot. Uh, I, I quite enjoyed that. I thought that was a cool little perk, that, like, the better their luck was, the more often... It wasn't just getting a critical hit, but it was chasing those fucking special abilities. I, I, I liked that a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so they, the I don't like I said I don't know an, enough about the second one I don't remember it but I know they do a lot more of like tracking those special abilities and stuff in the third one. Oh yeah, where it will show you that like in the status screen and stuff like show you the ability. I think you can earn experience for each of the abilities too. And oh, so cool. then once you once you level up the unleash, it's even stronger. So it's oh sick. I like that. Yeah, I, I liked that. I liked that a lot. I meant to ask you. Uh, whenever you get to a merchant, they have buy, they have sell, they have, um, artifact, I think artifacts, right? which I thought was cool because some didn't have them, some did, and then you'd find them and they'd only have one of them, but usually they were pretty powerful items. You could pick one and put it on somebody, but then yeah. there was also a repair option. I never once came across something that I had to get repaired. Uh, I think that's for if, uh, with cursed stuff. Oh, well, no, but that's another... Isn't that when you'd go see the like priest guy? Or, oh no, there's um some some of the items. There's some items can be used uh for effects. Like you get a healing ring pretty early on. Yeah, I that, had that. Uh, yeah. So if you use it in battle, it's fine. But if you use it outside of battle, it's one and done and breaks. And then you have to take oh. it to the shop to fix it so you can use it again. I so see. So you can use it every single t every every battle over and over and over again, but yeah. using it outside of battle breaks it, and then it has oh, to get fixed. Oh, okay. Because that's what I was doing with it, was using it in battles over and over. But mm -hmm. I, I uh, yeah, like, it was driving me crazy that I was like, I got to the very end of the game and never had to get anything repaired, and I was like, yeah, it was I just love paying things. repair people. Yeah. I want yeah. to, this is a thing for me. I want Same thing, this. if you just happen to never put a cursed weapon on, you never need to go get the curse removed. Yeah, the only, th the only time I ever used those priest guys was to bring people back from the dead in the early going. Yeah, like so. there's a couple cursed weapons where you're like, yeah, it's worth it for a bit, but then it's not, and right. you have to go pay to get it. And it's just it's a pain in the ass to to go find a town, go find a priest to get them to fucking pull it off you. Yeah, well, and that like speaking of the pain in the ass thing, and like we'll kind of get ready to start wrapping this thing up. But like when you would die, and I only died a few times outside of that final boss. And I'll be honest, straight up, everybody, like I was, I had a save state in front of that final boss. When I died, I could just yeah. load my save state. Oh, uh, God bless safe states. RPGs are safe states are for. Yeah, if somebody wants to come in and give us grief for using safe states, then yeah. like, come yeah, at me. Ahead. My DMs are open. Yeah, come get me. <laughs> Mine aren't, but you can come get me anyway. I don't even fuck. Um, but when you die, like when you when all four party members die in this game, like Isaac gets brought back uh, at low health, but then uh, like you need to, again, because there's no healing items, it's like, I would honestly... I would rather just reload my save than deal with like yeah. go to the priest, pay out the ass to get everyone revived, then have to hike back to where I died and fucking start again. Yeah. It just doesn't and seem worth you're it. You're behind. It's like you it's like, yeah, I already lost and now I'm further behind. Yeah. It's like clearly I wasn't good enough to beat the battle. So I need to do, you know, something to get stronger, get a better piece of equipment or something. But you're gonna instead of leaving me to go do that, I'm now, you know five grand in the hole 
Yeah, it just and now it's I like I'll just load my save. That. Yeah, and and uh oh oh extra props to this game for letting you save pretty well anywhere you want. Mm-hmm. Like but I'm save stating. Point, point away for uh attacking an enemy, and if it dies, you attack the empty spot. Oh, we haven't buddy, brought that up thank yet. Thank you. That I, I was, does not belong uh, in any games after the year after fucking two thousand, like after the eighties. Agreed. That went away to, early uh, on in Final Fantasy. Don't know why the fuck they brought that back to this one. I think they got rid of it in just the second one. Oh, I don't remember fuck. being in the third one, but it's like, man, what the fuck was this? Dude, I would have been livid <laughs> if we had ended this podcast and I forgot to bitch about that. I was bitching about it on social media too. Like I fuck if you've never if you don't like if it like you know when you're like when you're playing an RPG and there's like three fucking orcs in front of you and you have all four party members attack the one orc and then once he dies they should just naturally attack one of the other enemies. And this is one of those games where if you're attacking an enemy that died by someone else's hand previously that turn, they just go on guard. And it's like, yeah, fuck me. Just, you know, you got to attack that guy. He's right there. Yeah, I, th- I think it does fuck. it for healing too. I, Cause I think the way the code works is it checks like, like uh, the targeting happens before the turn happens or whatever. So it's like, same thing. If you try to heal somebody that's on low health and then they get killed, I'm pretty sure you heal the empty space. Oh, like, God. I think it's just the straight up, just, it's just the we, we however they programmed the targeting. Fuck Doesn't that drives me crazy. And a, a, a legal target. Yeah. So. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that. I would have been, I would have lost my shit if we had finished this episode <laughs> and then I forgot to bitch about that. It's, I'm genuinely, that's costing it a point in my yeah, score. Like genuinely. That's just, that's just, come on. Burned my fucking ass. Um, I don't know. Other than that though, game looks good, plays pretty well. I thought the, the gin system was very clever. Uh, I thought the writing was a little long winded and kind of bland for my taste. Yeah. But like, um, like I said, that's because they wrote it as two games. Like right. it started as, a set of two games it was always going to be like that same the third one actually was supposed to be the same it's supposed to be a pair of games and then i guess there was i think it was a funding thing or and like it just the budget was just starting to get out of it so they just crammed it all into one game oh, but then i think sense. there's still there's still like a kind of a cliffhangery thing at the end of that third game so there's still like should be a fourth game that happens there's just like a a bunch of plot threads that just you know ended right cool game though i liked it i took me a long time to get into it and jrpgs by and large not my uh not my wheelhouse but i will say like once this game once i finally got past that slow start and got into it this game really sunk its claws into me this week i've played i've probably played 20 hours of it this week like i've played it like and i really wanted to beat it man but i just when i got to that final boss i tried twice those two bastards and their stupid dragon heads and they killed me and i was like i'm done Mm -hmm. i I don't have time for this anymore, but I, I liked it. Yeah. Um, you, you you did the effort. You tried a couple times. I did. Looked up the ending, whatever. I looked up the God bless YouTube. Yeah. I did indeed. And I needed to walk through for a couple of parts because I got stuck. So, uh, fuck. How oh, I'll score? come right out the gate. My replay that I was playing, I was using a walkthrough the whole time. Oh, Because like I, I said, there's so many secrets and backtracking and stuff you can go find. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, I, I want to. Because, and then, uh, oh, one thing we didn't bring up, uh, you can transfer your save into the second game. Oh, see, now somebody else had mentioned that, and they were like, I think I your decisions totally carry over. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, your decisions I, don't, because another thing we didn't talk about is your decisions in the game don't ever matter, ever. Yes. It's just a Dragon Quest style of, it, it, it's clearly a throwback to the old school Dragon Quest, where it lets you say yes or no, but it doesn't actually mean anything. You yeah. might get a funny joke when you do it in like at certain times but for the most part it's just there it's it's one of those it, it was like a throwback to the old school rpgs of like yeah. just the i see i and i meant to bring that up too because like i i have no pro like so if you've not played it there's there's endless situations where they will ask you you know hey isaac what do you think of this and then you could say like yes or no and then it doesn't matter what you say they're going to make you go the way they want you to go but i will say that like i was a little shocked with just how frequent like it was it happened a lot yeah like it was it they're definitely fans of the old school dragon quest games yeah 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 like like it was a those ones are like that too where it's just yeah just like in one conversation they'd be asking isaac like three times like hey what do you think about this and it's like nod yes or nod no like those are your options and and it doesn't matter it never matters (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. 
The, the fun so, thing is, in the third game, they added two extra options. So now you have four facial expressions you oh. can make that don't do anything. Y- yes, no, you can be so. yeah, y- yes, no, or I think it's like happy, mad, sad, and confused, or something like that. Oh. <laughs> like it's just, it's just like takes the joke even further to just like, oh, so these four symbols mean even less than just nodding yes and nodding y- no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and, thought it was a little bit, a little bit yeah. ridiculous, but it was minor. Um. Everyone keeps asking me, are you going to do the second one? Honestly, not for a while. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get rebirth done, and then I'm, I'm taking a fucking RPG yeah. hiatus. Take but a break, I, but also you do need to go back and finish the game to get that code so you can transfer it to the second. Well, one. that's probably not going to fucking happen because I'm not going grinding to beat that fucking game. But I, I liked it. I liked it. I frankly liked it more than I thought I was going to, because mm-hmm. I, again, I this one our poll in December. It took four months for me to get to it. And I really thought, like, boy, I know people love this game. This is going to be rough because I think this sucks. But once you get mm-hmm. past the intro, I was actually genuinely, I, I, it gave me, like, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I got into it like I did some old Super Nintendo RPGs. It was, it's a good fucking game. I have no idea what to score this thing out of, other than it came out in two thousand one. Um, how many fucking gin are there total? Oh, maybe that would work. Twenty eight, and there's seven for think- element. Something like that. Six or seven. Maybe. Oh, yeah, there are 28. Yeah, I got it. There are 28. Here we go. Yeah. 28 All right, gins. good call. All right, you go nuts then. How many gin? How many? How much gin do you want out of 28? Uh, let's go... Well, maybe 25 sounds about good. You know, mm-hmm. point for the battles for the not targeting changing because oh, like yeah. a full point is gone because yeah. that's fucking stupid. Yeah. Uh, point for the sandstorm desert with the water and the whirlwinds. Yeah. And... And then just yeah, it, the 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 slow start. We'll give her oh, twenty five. It's it's a great great game. You just you gotta. I I hate I hate being that guy too. You gotta put in the work to get past those first couple hours. Yeah. And and make sure you talk to everybody. Everybody. Yeah. This and then is, once it, you can it, read it's their an minds, old school read their RPG. Minds. You gotta be talking to NPCs to to know what you need to be doing in the game. Yeah, there, there. I, I found myself. That was the number one reason I had to go to the walkthrough. It was secondarily for the puzzles. It was primarily there were many instances where I just couldn't figure out where the fuck to go. Mm. So I very, very old school RPG yeah. in that sense. I'll give it. I'll give it like a twenty three. It was good. I, I, I thought it was a way too much jibba jabba for my taste that didn't accomplish anything. Um, mm. drove me crazy that I couldn't get my spells to do what I wanted them to on the overworld. Sometimes the not attacking people fucking makes me nuts. And the lack of healing, the lack of reviving items fucking pissed me off. But yeah. I'm telling you, like, if anyone's like, oh, only a 23 out of 28, I don't even like this fucking genre. That's a pretty yeah. good fucking score. It's pretty good. Like, that'd be like, I don't really like fish, but I'm giving your fish an 8 out of 10. That's a pretty good fucking score. So, yeah. Good game. And I, I don't know when, but I, I hear all of you. At some point, I will fire up Golden Sun too. I don't know when. Probably be a long time, but I will eventually because I, I enjoyed this. Yeah. Don't um, expect it before 2025. No, don't, don't, don't. That's straight right. up, it not will even, not happen. Not even this joking. Year. Just at least yeah. 2025. It's not happening this year. <laughs> uh, Keegs, buddy, good job. Good talking to you. That was fun. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, it's been a while. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, I'll holler at you the next time I get suckered into playing another one of these fucking RPGs. 2025. Yeah, 2025. <laughs> good shit. Uh, good stuff, buddy. Take it easy, man. You too. is going to do it for this week's episode. Keegs, thank you so much for giving me a call and talking Golden Sun and to every single one of you nerds listening to this. Whether this was your first Remember the Game or your 293rd? What number was this? 293? I think whatever. Whatever number it is. Doesn't, I don't give a fuck. I really don't give a fuck. I'm just grateful that you came. Uh, <laughs> it came. I'm grateful that you, you, you got here and, uh, and I hope you stick around because we have no fear. We've got stories for years. Just today I published the list on social media of what I think 
the next month or so of Remember the Game looks like. I don't often do this, but in case you're wondering, next week I think we're going to talk a little Spy versus Spy for the NES. I love that game. 295 in a couple weeks, we'll be revisiting The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening for the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. 296 will be Beautiful Joe for the Nintendo GameCube, and 297 will probably be X-Men 2 The Clone Wars for the Sega Genesis, assuming that nothing goes wrong. That is very, very pending, but that's what I'm shooting for for the next month and a half. So I uh, appreciate you giving us a chance. If you liked it, hang around, subscribe, leave us a nice review, all that good stuff. And if you really liked us, consider looking us up on Patreon. It's not like I'm just asking you for the change in your couch for nothing. You give me three, five bucks a month, three or five or 10 or 20, whatever tier you want, but give me a couple of dollars and I will give you more of my voice than you could possibly handle. There are fucking hundreds. There's about 230 expansion passes waiting over there. There's 180 something game patches. There's 160 something rambling idiots. There's like 50 purple monkey dishwashers. They're all ad free and they're all right there to add to your phone the second you sign up on Patreon. Plus you help us keep the bills on around here. So patreon.com slash remember the game. I'm also on Twitch twitch.tv slash remember the game whenever I have time. And don't forget I will be at the Calgary Comic Expo or whatever they call it uh, next week. April 20... Ah, I should have had this written down. I thought I could do it off the top of my head. April 25th to the 28th. So come by and say hi if you're at the Calgary Expo. I am leaving early Friday night. But other than that, I will be there that week. So check us out. And don't forget, four tickets remain. Four tickets. One, two, three, four tickets remain. For Mark McHugh and I's comedy show in Toronto on June 28th, you can find those at RememberTheGamePodcast.com. All tickets come with a meet and greet and everything. I want to sell this thing out so I can stick it up a club owner's ass that wouldn't hire me. So uh, if you've been thinking about coming by, get those tickets. Four tickets left. And uh, that's it. I'm going to thank some patrons and get out of here. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. I will be back tomorrow for all of our Patreons with my look back at the NES game patch on Friday with all the biggest news in gaming. And we'll be back next week with a whole other slab of these stupid things, including, remember the game number 294, probably Spy versus Spy for the NES. Take it easy, everybody. Talk to you on the next one. Cheers. So long. Goodbye. Remember the game is brought to you by our Patreons. I could not puke up all the content I churn out every week without all of your support. The following people are at the Senior Executive Vice President level or higher at patreon.com slash remember the game. And as such, I am contractually obligated to thank them. So a huge thank you to Remember the Game Hall of Famer Slick Mother fucking Rick. Makeshift Battle of Magic Money, Joe Buck, Sharonic, J Nasty15, The Keegs, James Clark, Dave McGee, Dan of Dissect That Film, Doug Doran, Chris Fleury, Andrew Wright, Jordan, Confused But Still Here, Lil Bunny Fufu89, Angry Ticks, Dave Thompson, No One Cares, Scott Brooks, Aaron Lawson, Nathan Tremblay, A Town, Morgan, Zane, Donovan, Ryan Kinchin, Mike Maloney, G9PSX, Mercury869, Wolfgang, Darren, Andy Hudson, Doogie, Wolf Magic. 21, Johnny from Virginia, Squints, Titan 420, Zonko 504, Jeff Bergeron, Daniel, Tunable Power, John Woodruff, Randy Barrage, Jit the Fish, Legend of Zelda, The Erotic Adventure of Hercules, that's his fucking sweet handle, Holmes, Zach Shepard, Frosty P492, Triple, Chugger 22, Elijah Burns, Madam Nutsich, DBXJ, Jameer Williams, D Steve Dalpk, Dalpk, I suck at this. Standard S, Brian Mizuru, Juris Dr. Mario, Tyler, Phil Lencher, Joe the Sandman, Eric James, Jake Carter, Thomas Childs, Biddy, Laces Out Dan, Beaver, Beaver Boy, Thomas Smith, Leroy Westrich, Rush's Dog Walker, Stud Still Smash, Matt Babineau, Gabe, Dan Fusselman, Fuzzy99, Decoy Man, a dude named Adam Wyatt, the surgeon who's not a surgeon, Row, Blaine the Hoagie Man, Scary Terry, Storm Beagle, Archangel Otaku, Earl, Hagel Waffle, High Plains Drifter, Kh, Jimothy, Oroku Saki's Gardener, Cody Richardson, General Fury, Dem Boys on the Roof, I Cancel My Netflix to afford this shout out, Max Lagroom, James Juan Francesco, John of the Adult Children Podcast, Drugs Bad MK, Sam Carpenter, Donnie the Dude, Walter, Nerdy Hybrid, The Fletchman, Colin Bollinger, Sleeper Hit, Squeak Nuts, Isaias, Timmy the Exuberant Turtle, Wimp 15, Christian Gabriel, Maverick Marty, Radioactive Man, Musty Beetle, Graham Kennedy, John M. Watkins, Timothy Sabrinsky, My Left Nut, Beef Dingleberry, Hitchy Poo, Chevy Boy 9211, Burt Macklin, Quiet Place Queen, Cam Nelly 23, Christopher Britt, Zamatos, Big the Cat, Tadpole, Maverick, Bobby Litton, Brendan Dezeba, Kia Pup, Monstrous D. Boner, AB Killen, Works For Me, Alexander Camps, Yes It's True, This Man Has No Dick, Nice. That's what I heard. Tom Houlihan, Ted Explosion, Ryan Perry, Alex R, Lucas Valadez, Itchy Nutsaru, Mr. Papa Giorgio, Just Car Prank, Solomon Soto, Rated X, Lint, Dar Skywalter, Postman, Tazelhoff, Nick, Nick Creature, Youngster TK, Adam Martinet, This Man Fucked Floyd Mayweather, Kevin Monroe, Can't Destroy Her, Adam Don't You Dare, Bismirch, The Thunder God, Raiden, Fuck Raiden, uh, Beers, well, I don't hate that Raiden, I hate Raiden from Metal Gear. That's not that Raiden, is it? Do I hate? Uh, maybe I do hate him. 
I hate everybody. Beers of War, Because 19, Marcus Mendoza, Lord Longrod, Bod Huge and Dom the Second, Roger Staubach's Pool Cleaner, Lucas Shaman, Frosty Bear, Max Sandin, Sour Goat Face, Alex Ramos, Faded Sufferance, Benjamin Atkins, Carbon Fiber Zombie, Chris Hill, Question Mark Profits, B Money, Tyler Bauer, Fallen Snow Kiku, The Supreme Chose Rizzo, Would You Kindly, E Man Trucker, Mark Sneed, Atrio Wormwood, Shoe Boxers, Pat Phoenix, Jay Callahan, Robbie Air, Guy Who Does Things, Saban, Brian Richmond, Blobby Rogers, Glue Scappin, Bula, Matt Zeus, Buy Me Bone Storm, Wow, King Cesar, fill up my mouth with farts. Liquor like Luigi, Cody Thompson, put it in age. Chaz Hammond, Elephant Calves, Scissor Fist, Ace McGuy, Max, Mr. Jabroni, Big Daddy Randall, Ryan Whitcomb, Flinny123, AJ McKirji, Lotus, Nothing Could Possibly Go Wrong, Toby OP, Alex McIntyre, Z Train22, S, Bearded Bastard, Adam Blank still hasn't reviewed Sly Cooper 2, Eric Hopewell, Darbles, Son of a Diddly, David Schroeder, Theodore, Chicken Gizzards, Diablo Spartan, Justin Blair, Wilco, VOS Rager, Super Jess, Captain Steve N, Adam's former assistant, Shank the Rat Face Bastard, Devin Collins, and Human Sumo, Crystal Lake Management, and Leo, 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 all in capital letters. Oh, man. That started out rough, but I feel like we pulled out of the nosedive just in time. Uh, thanks so much, everybody. Appreciate all of you. Talk to you on the next one. Cheers. That ought to hold those SOBs. <laughs>